This is the Life Group lesson for Sunday, September the 12th, 2021. It's entitled Joy of Adversity. We're in the book of Philippians, and today's passage is chapter 1, verses 12 through 26. I have my journal here with me today, and I'm going to share with you about five things from today's passage as we break it down. Uh, we're going to talk about open doors, a mission accomplished, being God honoring, and Christ alone. But before I start us out, let us have a word of prayer together. Father, as we look at today's passage, help us to know that we can have joy even in difficulty by knowing that the gospel is spreading. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing we want to see in today's passage is that Christians can have confidence in sharing their faith in Christ. Let's look at chapter 1 of Philippians, starting in verse 12 through 14. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. Most of the brothers have gained confidence in the Lord from my imprisonment and dare even more to speak the word fearlessly. So as Paul is writing this, uh, his struggles had not started in Rome where he was imprisoned. He had actually endured accusations. He'd been in chains. He'd been under trial. And he'd been doing this before Jews and Gentiles. Uh, he had even survived a shipwreck when he was traveling to Rome. But his work there, even though it was difficult, was still bearing fruit and it was producing more uh, Christians. Uh, he was proving that the gospel could not be deterred. Um, even during his house arrest, Paul is witnessing to the whole imperial guard. He was making sure that the people that were guarding him heard about Jesus Christ. Scholars have suggested that Roman guards rotated about every four hours. So he basically had a new guard every few hours to share Jesus with while he was imprisoned. He recognized a new confidence in others as well. So apparently some Christians uh, had lacked uh, confidence or boldness to witness, and now that they had seen that Paul was enduring what he was enduring in prison and still sharing, this gave them a new confidence to share with others as well. Uh, they're gaining courage because of Paul's boldness, and he says that they are sharing the gospel fearlessly. The second thing we want to see in today's passage is that Christ blesses the message regardless of of the motives. Let's look at Philippians 1 verses 15 through 18. To be sure, some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. These preach out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Only that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed. And in this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. So what's going on here is there's a message of two groups of people that Paul identifies in this passage. Um, the message is the same, but their motives are different. Uh, there are two groups here, and the members of the second group were evangelizing out of a genuine love for Jesus and for Paul's ministry. They knew Paul was a prisoner of Christ, so they appreciated his suffering in defense of the gospel. The other group, uh, the first group that he mentions, are not as pure. They're preaching out of selfish ambition, he says. They are hypocrites but apparently they're not heretics. They simply just wanted to use Christ as a weapon against Paul, hoping to frustrate him or discourage him, or they had their own agendas in place. But for Paul, the only thing that mattered was that Christ would be proclaimed, 
whether the motives were pure or corrupt, God's big enough to bring people to himself, and he trusts in that. So, as a result, Paul continues to rejoice. He won't condone the wrong motives, but he leaves that situation in God's hands, and he celebrates the results of people sharing the gospel. The third thing we want to see in today's passage is that for Christians, death means eternity with Christ. Let's look at verse 21. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So, some scholars have suggested that Paul wanted to die as a martyr. He never feared death. In fact, he viewed life and death as a win-win situation. On one hand, uh, living on earth was living for Christ. That's what he means by saying to live is Christ. Uh, he could not conceive of living without Christ anymore in his life. He always wanted to have his life living out for the glory of Christ. So if he survived this trial before the emperor that was coming up, he would still serve Christ. Um, he also knew that this world is not the end of everything. It's not the end of the story. That dying for Christ is a gain. He would experience an incredible freedom from the moment he took his last breath because he knew that that was not the end. So in this sense, he was going to live in heaven with Christ. Uh, so he preferred death because it would mean an end to his earthly struggles and it would start an eternity in the presence of Christ. So this indicates that Paul uh, expected to be either released or to die at some point. But for him, whether he lived or died, Christ was always in control and Christ would always be honored. The fourth thing we want to see in today's passage is that believers should be eager to share the gospel of Christ with whatever time they have left. Let's look at verses 22 to 24. Now, if I live on in the flesh, this means fruitful work for me, and I don't know which one I should choose. I am torn between the two. I long to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. So when he's talking about in the flesh, he's referring to a physical existence. He knew he would die someday, but God had allowed him to live through a lot already. But as long as he lived, he would continue the fruitful work of sharing the gospel. But he still felt a tension between the now and the then. Um, in either case, Christ is at the center of his life. But he struggled to know which one he should choose. Or in this case, which one was the better option. Um, he's torn between these two choices. So... Um, he knew this world was not really his home, so if he could depart and be with Christ, he would be going on to something greater. Um, but he's not just willing to die, but he's eager to die in that sense. He didn't just have a death wish, he just longed for intimacy with Jesus Christ, which only would be provided or available when he died and spent eternity with Christ. But if God still had work for him to do, uh, and he was leaning that way, it sounds like in this passage, um, he was willing to do that. And his continued uh, ministry would be more necessary in God's agenda. And the final thing we want to look at in today's passage is that believers should boast about Jesus. Let's conclude with verses 25 and 26. Since I am persuaded of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that because of my coming to you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus may abound. This text indicates that Paul completely expected to make a return trip to Philippi. Uh, he was all about Jesus, and so whatever happens, he wants Christ to be exalted, even if that meant waiting on eternity later. Uh, the needs of others were taking priority, so he would work until his task was complete. He's basically saying, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and have joy in the faith. 
And if he comes to you again, he wants us to boast, to share, to be proud of Jesus Christ and that that would be shared with everybody. So in conclusion, in today's passage, we want to remember that Paul uh, wanted us to never miss out on any opportunity to make a big deal out of Jesus. We, in turn, should never miss out on any opportunity that we have to share about Jesus and our faith with others, because that is what sharing the gospel and our mission truly is. Thank you for joining me for today's uh, Bible study as we go through this journey through the book of Philippians. I will see you in the next session.